There's a new hardest game that's so floating around that I don't think many All I know is that this, this game is going to be a Suica game, which literally means watermelon game, has been taking the world by storm recently, and for many reasons. But mainly, the game's just addictive. It may as well be our generation's version of Tetris. And because I'm a Roblox developer, it is my sworn duty to copy the game and paste it onto the platform. What? What? What's that? Someone did that already. Um, okay, uh, let's make the game 3D. So yeah, I made Suica game in 3D, and lucky for you all, there really won't be a giant technical explanation for the entire game, because, you know, it's very simple. If two fruits merge, then it spawns a bigger fruit, and you get some points. That's really about it. The art also really isn't that interesting, because I just opened MS Paint and drew textures, like not great ones. I mean, this badge is pretty silly. If we actually look at the project itself, I mean, there's really not much to it. You have this beam object here with a animated texture and this blue selection circle thing. So you can, you know, see where the fruit you're placing is. I mean, probably the coolest thing about this entire project is the particles. I really like how the particles turned out. So we have the collide particle, which just shoots out a bunch of stars. And this happens whenever the change in speed on a fruit is over like a certain threshold. And it just shows the stars. It adds a cool little visual flair. I don't know. I like it a lot. And then we have the merge one, which happens, you know, when fruits merge. And it just shoots these like little sparks out. I don't know. It's satisfying though. It, it really looks nice. There's also a fire particle which shows up if you get a large combo, which I'll try and demonstrate. As you can see, the fire is there on the bottom. Spawns only for a little bit. Well, I mean, depends on the combo, really. And that's really about it. I mean, there's some sound effects. We have the merge sound, and this actually goes up in the C major scale, which uh, makes it really nice for like combos. And then there's also this plop sound effect that I just took from the toolbox. That goes for literally every other sound effect. The most complicated part of this project, honestly, was maybe the camera controls, cause I'm not that good at math. And the UI part also really wasn't that complicated. This uses an easing function on the number, the score to go up, and also adds to a list down here, which shows all the fruits merged. As you can see, these both show up here, and then this eventually fades away. Before I forget, there is this trail. All the fruit parts have them. It's it's really nothing special, but when put together, it's pretty satisfying. I like it. And then I guess there's also these image ads here, but uh, they don't work, so uh, we don't talk about those. And there isn't even any monetization besides premium payouts. So you're probably wondering, why did I even make this video in the first place? Well, I made a very interesting financial decision. I decided to spend 10,000 Robux to advertise a game with no monetization. I know, it's a really great idea. Now, why would I make such an irrational decision after just stating that I put literally no monetization into the game? Well, partly because I was bored, but the other reason is because the game is addictive. There's just some incomprehensible magic when you see fruits merge together, especially when they're in giant combo chains. I guess you could say that I wanted other people to experience that magic too. Too. Nah, I just wanted to see how much Robux you can make if you make a bunch of premium players play something that's more addictive than crack. Now before I get into the performance of the game, I want to share with you all what is proven to make a game addictive. The first thing you must understand when you're trying to make an addictive game is that the game must feel responsive and satisfying. Because we all know that there's nothing better than racking up a giant combo in your favorite game. But the action of making a combo is not satisfying enough. There needs to be other gratification and other things that stimulate your player's mind. This comes in the form of visual and audio effects. If you hone in on these details, then your game will be 10 times more addictive than it already was. Would it really be 10 times? I don't know, I just pulled that number out of my ass. But what I do know is that not only will your game feel better, but it will also look and sound better too. Another very important detail of making an addictive game is difficulty. Now this may seem obvious, Obvious, but if your game's too easy, then the player is just gonna get bored and leave. And if the game's too hard, then you're gonna have little Timmy throw his iPad at the wall, both of which you don't want. 
Obviously. You know, if your game's too boring, maybe... Maybe someone should experiment with, like, putting Subway Surfers gameplay on the bottom of your game. So, like, if there's a boring part, then they could just, like, watch the Subway Surfers gameplay. Now this is awesome. Now, if you want to ascend to the next level and achieve heaven, well, there's only one more thing you can do to make your game addictive. And that's to add gambling. Add gambling. Do it. Or maybe don't. Now, you may be thinking, Liam, why should I be listening to your great and terrific and wonderful advice? I'm only asking because I'm insecure and I have severe trust issues. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd I write that? Well, that's a very good question. The reason you should believe me is because I have more Robux than you. And as we all know, having more Robux than someone else is a deterministic factor of whether you're a good developer or not. Now, if you followed my advice down to the last letter, then you should have a game so addictive, you should now have psychological control over the masses. The next step is to make small updates to your game so you can subliminally send messages to your players. That way, you can force them to do your bidding for better or for worse. Now, I'm just saying, if you do successfully manage to do this, uh, you know, maybe consider making them subscribe to my channel on Woefully. But I, I'm just saying, it's, it's, you know, it, it would be nice, you know? It's a little recognition would be nice. We'll make it to 10K one day, gang. All right, all right, but enough of that. How did the game do? Well, it did like shit. And really, that shouldn't be to anyone's surprise. I mean, I literally spent like a weekend making the game. I, I didn't put that much effort. I mean, yes, sure, it looks visually pleasing, and the sounds are nice, but I mean, as far as the game goes, there isn't really all that much to it. And that goes for the original game. There really isn't all that much to it. You merge fruit together, you get a giant score, that's about it. Their game is profitable because they charge money for it. I didn't do that because then literally no one would play it. So if we actually look at the retention stats of the game, you'll see that for the day win retention, many people played, they like stayed. This is while the ad was still up, obviously. They stayed and then this like diminished really quickly. My best guess is that people didn't see like other people on the game, even though it's single player. And I think that is a really big reason that like people don't join back because they don't think the game's good enough. I don't know. People didn't stay. If we look at the game right now, it literally has zero active players. It also has five dislikes. My best guess for these is that some four year olds got mad on their iPads and they lost to like a single grape and disliked the game. That's my best guess because the game itself doesn't really suck. If we look here, we can see 12 daily active users, which is terrible. And we can see that there's a six minute average play time. Now, this is a weird stat because like, well, the ad was on, it was actually quite high. It was almost like 15 minutes long, but as soon as the player count diminished, I guess so did their attention spans. And now we have like 6.7 minutes of average session time, which if you guys didn't know is bad. You want people to stay on your game for obvious reasons. So they like come back, you know, and I guess for fun, we can also look at the audience tab. So here we have the largest amount of players, which are from the United States. And then in second, we have Spain uh, at 2.8%. Now this doesn't really add up to 100%. I don't know why. I guess I'll have to think about that one. And of course, everyone's favorite statistic, the payment statistic. So this projected Robux thing shows that I made like 100 Robux. And well, I spent like 10,000. So, uh, you know, that may or may not be like a thousand percent loss, but you know, it, it, it happens, it happens. So what does this mean? Well, really, it means I just blew 10k Robux on a whim. Should I have done that? No. But what did I learn in doing this? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. If you throw your money into a furnace, the furnace will burn your money. Thanks for watching. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you for watching it. <laughs> nah, but seriously, thank you all, and Thank you for the support on the Chainsaw Man video. I will make a sequel to it because of all the positive feedback. Uh, I just need to actually have the time to do so, and school's been a big hindrance to that, so 
I haven't really been able to do it, but I'll do it as soon as I can. There may be another video or two before it. We'll see, only time will tell. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.